and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to explore the wonderful world of baby socks i've never done a crochet tutorial sock tutorial i should say ever before in my life and there's a reason for that and i'll tell you in just a moment and what we have here is a six month to 12 month size this is my own pattern took me five hours to figure out all the math just to be able to frog it and to do it and then to create an identical one that comes out to the exact same size is absolutely wonderful now you'll happen to notice that both of the striping is really close to each other you'll see that that's an absolute fluke. I didn't plan that. It just happens to be that almost one sock when you finish it ends up restarting the yarn again at the same point to be able to fasten it again. These socks though because they're so designer like I wouldn't stress about trying to match the colors with each other. That's the whole beauty of crochet socks. So let's explore and I'll talk a little more about baby crochet socks. So crochet socks are one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because I've tried it in the past but I can never get a second pair of socks to be the exact same size. <laughs> I should never admit that but it's absolutely true and the reason for that is that I either miscount or something and it has everything to do with the slip stitch for when you're joining it. But look there's no slip stitching is there? Do you see that? So I had to figure out a pattern that would work for my own personality because I swear I think there's a lot of people out there that absolutely love to do crochet socks but they get hung up on the slip stitch because then they start adding extra stitches and then they start miscounting. So within my pattern there's no slip stitching at all except for at the very end when we go to fasten off everything else is done in continuous circles. So we just continue to go around and around and around and by doing that you end up with this beautiful line so you'll never see any weird lines going up in it. Uh, so what we had here is that these two pair here are done with this ball here. This is the Red Heart bear, uh, Heart and Soul. This is ba Berry Bliss. You can see that I have a lot more extra yarn. I believe but don't quote me that I think that you can get two pairs out of one. I did weigh this ball on the postage scale and I think that it can be done. So it's one of those things you don't want to waste any yarn though if you're going to do it. It's pretty close to the line. So with one ball of these you can get two bear, uh, pairs of baby socks. Now everybody's uh, commenting I would love to do a baby boy project instead of all the girls that we always focus on. So today I'm going to be using the Red Heart and Soul faded jeans. I've never used this yarn before. I have no idea how it's going to turn out but this one I would classify to be more boys or more casual even for girls. So let's go through some of the pattern now. In the more information of this video you're going to find a direct link to my exact pattern on everything I used. You will tell that it's my pattern because I'm very long winded with some of my instructions because I really do want to aim you with the knowledge that you need to know. So what, what this sock is doing at this point is that we're going to start off on the toe and we're going to start working our way around and we're going to grow it evenly until we get to a certain size and you'll notice that as we work along. And then what's going to happen here, we're going to get to a certain point and then all of a sudden we're going to single crochet and all of a sudden create a foundation uh, chain and it's going to take you up over here. And what's going to happen in this tutorial today and the reason why I really like this design is that we're going to be creating this whole area first. Then we're going to immediately come around and then create a foundation chain and finish the rest of the sock leaving this without a heel. The heel is done at the very end of this project. So this is one of those things where you really don't have to stress it because in actual fact this stuff here is so simple. Even the heel is so simple but because we have started off at the bottom here instead of the top um, it ends up looking and being a lot more easier to manage. So today we're going to be using, using a size F, a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook today. Going to be using the red heart and uh, heart and soul. <laughs> and let's get started. Let's begin and grab our yarn and let's play with this pattern together. To begin we need three stitch markers. These stitch markers should be a different color from each other so that you can tell exactly what they are. So what I want you to do on your pattern or unless you're following along I want you to write down on your pattern and say um, blue equals the start, yellow equals the halfway point and white equals another. You may have different colors. This is just scrap yarn for me. This is so critical in order to keep your pattern straight for when you're working on it. So let's grab our yarn and we are going to just simply just tie or do a slip knot to be begin. Just like so, let's grab our crochet hook and to begin all we just need to do is chain three. So one, two and three. Now what we need to do is that we need to put three single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So we're just going to come into the second chain just like so in 
and we want to put three. So one, two, and three. I find always starting off with thinner yarn, I'm always a little more conscientious. So I got three in there and what I want you to do, just pull up a loop like this and I want you to grab the one stitch marker that you decided that is gonna be your first stitch marker. So this is gonna be the beginning round of my work going forward. So I'm coming to the second stitch that I had. So you had, you had three single crochets, come to the second and grab your stitch marker and just pull it through like so. This. And the, so this stitch marker blue will represent every time we're starting a round. And because we're doing a continuous round is that this will always mean that for me. So let's uh, begin, uh, continue along sorry. And what we need to do is just pull everything back tight to your hook. So now we have our starting round position. We're gonna come to the second chain which is the last chain and we are going to do three single crochets again. So one and two and three. Just get that straggler out of the way for you and three and we wanna come to the second one of those group of three and mark it with the nether stitch marker. So yellow is gonna represent my halfway point around. So basically these stitch markers are sitting on either side of the sock. So if you're looking at a child and looking straight down, these stitch markers would be on either side of their foot. So to finish off this round as per my instructions, we're just gonna pull everything back tight. I want you to come to the very first stitch that you started off with over here. Okay, so there will be three stitches, one, two, and three. I want you to single crochet into the beginning of those three. So just into there. The starting is really cumbersome, but this is totally worth the effort because once you get, get it going, it's worth it. So I'm coming into the starting one that I started off with to finish off this round because we're working in a continuous round. We don't want any slip stitching. We're just going to finish off there. So we're finishing off the stitch before the, the beginning stitch marker just like this and that completes off round number one. To start off round number two, very simple. So this is the stitch marker. This is your first stitch. This stitch marker, there's gonna get three single crochets into that stitch. So one, two, and three. And again, now that we're going around there, I want you to grab that stitch marker. So go to the second one over from the three. Okay, and just grab the stitch marker and pull it through that. And that will represent the new beginning as you come around. And now I want you to single crochet the remainder going around until you hit the stitch marker once again. So one, so I'm not even gonna count. I started counting because I normally would. But what we want to do is get to the second stitch marker and we wanna put three single crochets in here. And so we're growing the front of the foot evenly and only on each side of the foot. So now that we have our three, you guessed it, we are going to put the stitch marker in the second one of the three to maintain it. So these stitch markers will always stay opposite to each other on either side of the foot. It just helps you to keep count and to be able to identify the stitches after. And what we want to do then, we want to come in and single crochet the remainder all the way back until you get to the stitch before the beginning stitch marker. So there's the stitch marker right here. So I wanna go to the stitch before and stop and that'll complete off round number two. So we're back and you will notice that in round number two, I will have put instructions at the very end that there was 10 stitches. So you should count 10 stitches going all the way around this in order to stay in balance. This is so important for when keeping your socks because you want them to be the same size. So now we're gonna move up to number three and we're gonna repeat again the last step we just did. So we're gonna start off with the stitch marker and we're going to put in three more double, uh, single crochets into there. The bigger this project gets, the easier it is to hold and the faster you will get out of it. It's just when it's so small like this, it gets really cumbersome. Pull up a loop and I want you to come and I want you to bring that stitch marker to the second one in from there and bring it through just to keep moving it up. If you want perfect socks, you're gonna have to bear with that. So we're gonna have to come around now. So we're just gonna immediately come to the next stitch and we're just going to single crochet the remainder until we get to the next um, stitch marker at the halfway point. So yellow is my halfway marker. 
when I originally started I had stitch markers out with the same color and it's impossible to remember and you start second guessing if you've gone all the way around or not. So now we're at the halfway point and we're gonna put three uh, single crochets in the halfway. Pull up a loop and bring your stitch marker into the second one of the three just to keep it balanced. And now I want you to put it back onto your hook and single crochet either yourself the remainder of the stitches going around until you get to the stitch right before the stitch marker. So I'm really anxious to see how this yarn turns out. I have never seen it done up. So here we go and so we're right before and that will complete off round number three. So now if you count all the way around you should have 14 stitches instead of 10 because we've just grown it a little bit more. Let's move up to round number four and round number four is again a repeat of what we already are doing. So this is the stitch marker. We want to put three more single crochets there. So our goal is to, to increase, <laughs> our goal is, is, is to work our way up to 26 stitches around. So now the second one in. So I put three in the first one. The second one in I want to move that stitch marker in. Um, I really like yarn for stitch markers just so you're aware. It's not because I'm cheap because I do have real stitch markers but I like to see the line within my work. So we're now going to come and we're going to single crochet ourselves all the way until the next. So just regular single crochet all the way until we get to the next stitch marker. And when we get to the next stitch marker we're going to put in three single crochets there. So I, I would found with myself is that even though my stitch count was absolutely identical in the second sock I found that second sock was just slightly a different size and the reason for it is that you will know it yourself. Once you go through a pattern once you get more comfortable and you, you're not get a second guessing so you're kind of blazing through it therefore your tension is slightly different. So if that happens to you it's nothing really much to worry about. The size is really minimal but you will tell it because you are a crochet. So once you get in your three you moved up your, uh, your stitch marker we crochet all the way back to the stitch before the beginning stitch marker. Just like that. And so that will complete off round number four and now you will have 18 going all the way around. So round number five is identical as well. So round number five we're coming starting with the stitch marker again and we are going to put in three more single crochets in there. I keep wanting to say double crochet. <laughs> There's virtually no double crochet in this thing. So we're gonna just move the stitch marker up again to the second one in. Just like that and then we want to continue to rotate around. So single crochet again so you will notice that this is almost creating an oblong or a uh, elliptical shape because of the way that we're growing it on the one side only. That's exactly what you're looking for. So this is not a circle. It was never meant to be a circle but it's actually fa the fact the front of your foot. Okay so we're coming to the uh, halfway point stitch marker. See with these things you can just pull up more yarn if you need more yarn. It's kind of a cool thing. And once we're there we're just going to put in three uh, single crochets again. Three and then we just continue oops second one in. We've got to make sure we move that stitch marker. There's nothing worse than losing your point on this project because then that's when you end up with the sock looking like it might have a weird twist to it because you're not growing it exactly where it needs to grow. So we're now going to single crochet the remainder of the stitches all the way back to the center or sorry to the beginning um, um, stitch marker which is blue in my case. And just going across. I think I already said it but I'm dying to see how this yarn works up. Okay so we're coming to the before point and then that concludes off round number five. So we have one more round of growing and then the rest of it becomes really easy.
So let's begin round number six. This is the last time we're gonna be growing this project. And so the stitch marker we're gonna begin. We have three uh, single crochets in there. So one, two, and three. And we simply just move this stitch marker. So even though you're not growing it anymore from this point, you still wanna move that stitch marker up. And we want to continue to single crochet the remainder going around to the halfway point. Looks like so. So the single crochet really kind of acts like it's knitting in some way. Um, some of this yarn looks a lot better if it's not, if the stitches are not too big. The colors look like they transition a lot better and you get some really beautiful striping as a result. So we're at the halfway point. Again, three singles in there. And again, move that marker up. Sometimes, see I, how I didn't pull a big enough loop? Sometimes that does happen. I just wanna make sure that we Just make sure we did get it in there. So there you go. So sometimes it does fall out and then we just come around in there. So technically that would have been an outtake for me but I'm gonna leave it in because I want you to see the, the, the point that you really do need to make larger loops before you do that. So when we come all the way to the stitch marker we are concluding growing the toe and we are going to move on to doing the foot area and this is the toe, this is between the toe and the heel. So let's uh, finish this off and this is concludes the toe region right now. So we're just before the stitch marker. Please do not fasten off. If you ever do want um, um, socks with a different uh, toe color, you can also start off with a different color and then change the color here at this point. So let's begin. We're going to go between the toe and the heel next. Let's begin between the toe and the heel. I pulled up a loop already and what I want you to do is that I want you to slip your hook in behind that stitch here just there. And I want you to grab another piece of string. This is your third stitch marker. The reason why I'm asking you to do this is that this is gonna indicate to you how many revolutions you are going around this project. So just pull the loop through and grab the yarn and pull through. This is gonna come out afterward. But instead of counting and moving up these stitch markers which is very time consuming for this uh, this duration of this part of the project. This is a great way in order to spin around the project and being able to have a marker so that you can count and know exactly where you started. So this is right here. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to start on the next stitch and that's in the stitch marker. Leave the stitch marker right where it is okay and it will be on the inside. So we're gonna leave it on the inside here and I want you just to continue to rotate around here single crocheting for 13 revolutions. So we want to make sure we got everything. So we're just going to continue to go around and basically the white stitch marker is an indication of where this started. So just like the rings of a tree that you can count up, once you start counting these blues right here and you can count 13 rows really easily because you're just spinning around. So what we want to do is just continue to rotate around 13 times with single crochet and this will take us to the starting of the heel and when we come back we're gonna start and work up the leg because the heel is the very last part of this project. So even at the stitch marker just leave this on the inside and just continue to go over top of it. You're not gonna move it. You'll do it later and just continue to go around 13 times. So just a few minutes ago I left you and now I've completed my 13 rows. Now how I counted that here is that here is where the white is. So starting from where this the here Okay, this blue happens to be right where I started and anyway, it just happens to be a fluke. And you just count up and you make sure that there's 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And when you do that, you, therefore, you know that you're done right. So essentially, I can now pull out the stitch marker at the bottom because that's the only thing that I needed that for at this point. So that's out done and now I need to bring the stitch markers back up. Now you will notice how it stays flat like this and it's basically due because I'm only growing on one portion, portion of this. I need you now to bring these stitch markers back out of the dark and I want you just to kind of bring up them right here. So we have the blue and we have yellow uh, to be done 
and they're sitting right in the center. So you can take them right out of the bottom. This product naturally wants to fold on itself so you can just pull it out. So when you fold these for example you see how it's wanting to stay flat so you know it's done perfect. So what I want you to do is right where we ended I ended exactly where I think that the side is and the key is I think and that's because it looks really close to me. So you know it's not a rough it's not an exact science it's just where I'm just going right into the edge. So now I want to bring in the stitch marker again the blue that's my starting because that's where I brought it in from. I want to do that one and essentially I want to pull everything nice and tight there in just a moment. But here I want to here where you do want to count is that you do want to make sure that you're on the halfway point. So you want to make sure you can count over 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See how 13 is exactly on the other side? So I want to put the stitch marker in on there as well. And we need to have these in there uh, for the remainder so that we can follow it properly. So let's bring everything back tight to our hook again and let's begin and we're going to start doing the leg. So we're going to totally skip the heel at this moment and I'll show you that will just make more sense in just a moment. So to begin what I need to do is that I need just a single crochet. So this here is the top of the foot. Okay that we're going to single crochet now is the top and it will totally make sense in just a few seconds. So we're going to single crochet ourselves all the way to the other stitch marker. And we're currently looking at the right side just so you know. So the side that we've been working with the whole time is the right side. And we'll go all the way to the stitch marker. And once we get at the stitch marker we're going to start doing the leg part. And we're going to totally skip over the heel. Okay. So we go right to the stitch marker itself right onto that stitch right there. So now we're going to do a single crochet uh, but it's going to be a foundation chain and what we're going to do is we're going to create a chain that's going to totally jump over this whole back end area. So to begin a foundation what we just need to do is come into see how there's two strings right now coming from that stitch. Just go to the first one okay and we pull through. You now have two loops on your hook and to pull through two and that counts as one. So the next one here is the second one of the string. Okay, so you see how there's two strings right here. It's the second one over. We're coming in. We want to make sure there's two strings on top. We pull through and then pull through two and that is the number two chain. So we have to, it's creating a beautiful chain so that you can operate on both sides. So again going in, pull through, pull through two and that was for three and continue to do that all the way until you get to 13. So now that I have my 13 foundation chains I want to make sure that this chain is not twisting at all. So you see how it's going up flat and all I want to do is come right back to the beginning blue one here. This is the beginning one and we just want to single crochet in there just like this. And so essentially now this is the starting of the leg. So this is be where the heel is going to be and now we're going to start working up in a vertical uh, formation. So let's begin your next step right now. So step two is really simple. All we just need to do now is continually rotate around here um, four more times. So we're just going to single crochet but this time when we get to that chain we want to just operate the chain as if it's a regular project. And so you will see then when we get to the other stitch marker that you know it's going to lift and we're going to start playing within the chain. Now because we did a foundation chain it will be very easy to identify your stitches. Uh, on either side and I find with myself I don't move my stitch markers at this point and what I want you to pay attention to. See this big gap right here? That does happen. So what we want to do is that when we come in here I want to come all the way down to the original where it's happening and then single crochet around that and what that will do is that it will bring it so that it's going to cover that gap just like this. And so now the single uh, foundation cr uh, crochet, the foundation single crochet I'm simply just going to just work around the chain for single crocheting as well. So this corner gap space there um, does happen. I'm really not sure exactly why it does. It's one of the downfalls of making socks. You need to address it right at that moment because it's something that if you leave and say well you know what it will work itself out. No way it won't. So if you can see that right in that very moment um, it makes the world a difference of being happy at the end. It, it probably does happen on both sides here. 
So it's one of those little tip, uh, tidbits of information. Um, especially with loom knitting you see a lot of that um, gapping right in that particular spot as well. So we're coming all the way back around. I'm still single crocheting into the foundation chain. Okay and I got one more to go. In here see I'm gonna have a gap. So what I wanna do is I wanna come all the way down to where that stitch marker is and do that and what that what that will do is that it will just bring everything closer together. So that was round number one of four. I want you to go around three more times. It's really easy to tell um, where the stopping and starting is so I don't bother to move the stitch marker. So rotate three more times around this and I'll meet you back up and we'll start doing front and back post double crochet. So I've now gone around four times and you can start seeing that the heel shape is perfect and it's still working up. So now we're gonna change this particular round only one time and you can tell that I haven't moved up the stitch marker but you can just follow up the stitches and determine where this blue one is stopping and starting. And so the next stitch I wanna do in the next round is that I wanna half double crochet all the way around. And uh, we're just gonna continue to do that and I wanna mark this stitch here right when I did that. I wanna mark it so that I know exactly where I'm starting. Uh, this one, sometimes it's harder to tell um, on the half double versus the single at times. So I'm just putting a stitch marker right in so I can tell exactly where I've started my half double. And I want you to half double all the way around and when we get back we're going to start doing some more fancier stitch work at that point. Now that I've gone all the way back around I stopped right over top of the stitch marker. So now I want to begin front post and uh, back post double crochet. So to do that we're gonna wrap and we're gonna come into the very next one on the bottom on the underside and we're gonna just pop out through the back post only and just come in and we're just gonna do a double crochet. So there's other tutorials on showing you how to back post and front post double crochet. We're gonna do the back post next. So we're gonna wrap we're gonna come in from behind, come up through the front, pop that next post backward and then pull through and then double crochet as always. Okay and we wanna to continue to do that back and forth so the next one is front and the next one is back. So do this whole one round just doing the same thing and when we come back I'm just gonna just show you another quick tip and then the rest of it. There's only three rounds of back loop and front back thing and what this is doing is it's creating the rib look or the cuff look of your socks. So just do that we'll meet you back up in just a moment. On the original sock that you can see here you can see ribbing and this is caused by the front and the back post crochets. So what we need to do is that I've just completed the first round and next one here you see how this is popping forward the other ones popping in the back. We just have to simply match what's happening. So this one is the front and we just do the front post double crochet. The next one is in behind. So then we just have to match it so that we can continue to keep those ribs going in the same way. So I want you to complete two more rounds of this uh, of the ribbing. This includes this one and uh, when we come back then we're gonna be finishing up the top of this sock. So do that we'll meet you back up in just a moment. Now that I've finished my back post and front post double crochet so you can see the ribbing is now in. All I want to do is just continue to rotate around here twice and we're just going to immediately start single crocheting and do this twice and on the last two stitches of the second uh, revolution I want you to slip stitch and I'll meet you there in just a moment. So slip stitch or sorry single crochet all around again two more times. And I've just completed my two rounds and now I'm just going to slip stitch into the final two stitches going around and then I want to be able to fasten off. So grab your pair of scissors. You will need a darning needle. It's the best way to go. You are using this on a child and I'm just creating an extra long tail so that I can use a darning needle and just grab the yarn and just pull through the last loop and all the way through. So to do this with the darning needle it's very simple. It's just grab a darning needle and we just wanna put it on like so. Should get all the plies in there. And essentially I wanna come into the direction from which I just came. So I've been crocheting like this. Okay, so I want to go back in the direction from which I just came. So I'm just gonna slip in my needle into some stitches and I wanna make sure that the needle is not really visible on either side. It's just in between all the stitches and then just pop it out through the back. So through the inside of the sock and pull through 
and when I go to do this I want to make sure I do loosen it up a bit and now I'm gonna go back into the same direction from what are the direction from which I just came and again I'm just going in a different spot and through like this and I want to do this one more time so I'm just gonna go into a different area and what this does is it really fastens this off so that you can pull it in any direction and it will not come loose and I want to get all my plies out and simply just uh, just trimming it at this point right there. So then that concludes off then doing the sock uh, on the top level. So now we still have the heel left and these are with the stitch markers that we have in the middle are gonna come into play for the remainder of this project. So when we come back we're gonna finish off the heel and make this sock look totally amazing. So let's begin. I'm gonna create a slip knot and I'm going to put this onto my hook and we want to come to the sock again in the beginning marker. So this is right where it's folding just like where we left off. So I want you to come in right where it's in the blue and I want you to bring in the new yarn and I want you to make sure that you get this straggler trapped into position so the child's feet is not catching on it or foot's catching on it and you just wanna push through. Okay. So what I want you to do is that I want you to single crochet into the same stitch from which you just were in. Okay. And we're gonna pull things nice and tight and then we're just going to simply just go around. So remember how we said already in the beginning is that we didn't wanna have any extra gaps. Well the gaps happen right here on this, on these turn, on these turning points right here. So we wanna make sure that the first one when we go to look at it that it's no, there's not gonna be any really obsessive gaps to do it. So if you can just see, bear with me here. So if I did it right now you might have a major, major gap. So we're looking for that right now because this is the time to address it. So we can always just grab a few extra strings in other stitches in order to pull things nice and tight together. So I'm just gonna move this straggler out of the way and just come in and we're just gonna simply just grab something. <laughs> it's kind of cheating in many ways but it, you'll love yourself after. So I just grabbed it so that you don't see any major gaps and we are just going to work our way around. Make sure the straggler is on top of the line so you can trap it into position and we're just simply working around the foundation chain. So when you're going around you wanna make sure that you never just grab one string. You always grab at least two uh, when you're going all the way around because if you only grab one that's where you're gonna have a major hole in the back. So we're gonna just do this all the way to the halfway point which is the yellow. Now I've done enough of this that I can leave that on the inside. I'm just gonna continue to go along. So I wanna make sure I just get everything in there. So the first one is always the most critical revolution. The rest of it is all really easy because you know the stitch work is all already defined for you. So what we wanna do is that once we get to the stitch marker we wanna stop in the last stitch before it. And what we want to do, so here is the stitch. I wanna stop right here. So I got one more to go. And the reason why I wanna do that is that I wanna do two together. So I'm gonna grab this one. But you see how there's a major gap there when I do that. So I'm gonna um, just come up and grab something else from maybe a line before. Pull through. Okay. And then I go into the stitch marker. Pull through. And then I'm gonna bring two together like this. And then we're gonna carry on going around. So this is the round number one of the heel. So essentially we are now gonna start decreasing stitches. So we're gonna run out of stitches as we go around. Oh, what I do wanna make sure though before I go any further is that I wanna make sure that I move my stitch marker up right where I did that. So the stitch marker then will be on the one that has the two together. Cause then this will make sure the seam is going up uh, evenly on the side of your, of your child's heel or uh, leg or foot. <laughs> Name a body part, any body part. So I'm just gonna single crochet again. And so I'm gonna finish off this round with a two together um, like on the last one. Now when we started the other part of the sock you notice that we always started off with the stitch marker being like the different stitch of the three uh, single crochets in the middle and in, in the stitch. This one here on this revolution what we want to do. So here's the stitch marker. You can see that this here is a rep representation. So I want to come into the one beforehand and I want to come into the new round that I was just in that I just created and bring it together 
and then bring up that stitch marker. So that would conclude off round number one. So this video is really critical for being able to identify those gapping spaces right off the bat so that you don't end up with a project you don't like at the end. So let's move on to round number two. So we have four more rev revolutions of what I'm about to do. We're just gonna start single crocheting into the first stitch and then what we're gonna just do is single crochet all the way to the, to the half. And we want to repeat exactly what we've already done here. So there's only five of these um, revolutions in the heel all together as far as what we're doing right now. So this is row number two or round number two. And we're just going across and I want to stop the one before the stitch marker. So here's the stitch marker. So I want to get the first one pulling up, then the stitch marker one up and put them together. I want to move that stitch marker up so I can see it in the next revolution. Like so. And then can carry on in the back of or sorry the, the other part. So just make sure you pull everything tight when you let things go. And we just immediately start into the next stitch. Make sure we can identify it. There you go. And so I want you to do this. So this was our two of five rounds that we need to do. So I want you to do rows number three, four, and five identical to what you're doing. The only difference is, is that you're gonna run, you're gonna get low on stitches. You're not gonna run out of stitches, but I want you to do the rest on your own. And remember when you get back to finishing a round, this is when you double cro or put two together on the final before starting the next round. So here is your stitch marker in the beginning. This is the one before the stitch marker one in and put it together and move that stitch marker. So please do rounds three, four, and five exactly what you've just seen done and when we come back then we're gonna be finishing off the bottom of the heel. We're almost done this project at this moment. So we're now almost done this project and we've gone rounds number one to five where we were decreasing and now the next round, round number six is that we're gonna start doing something really serious and really pulling it in just like so. So you can really get a good sense of how the sock is looking at this moment. So for round number six we are going to single crochet two together all the way around. So I'm just tucking in the loose ends just or the, the markers just to get them out of my way. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm going to in the first stitch is just and the next one is that I'm gonna put two together all the way around. So then the next two I'm gonna put together. And once we get all the way around essentially everything just divided in half. So what was left open will then automatically fall into half because we're decreasing every two stitches. We're making two stitches into one basically as we go all the way around and you'll see that this will be a very dramatic round as you go around. I'm not even gonna worry about the beginning um, or sorry the halfway point stitch marker at this point. Um, it's at the point, it's the very last line anyway. So okay, so we're just gonna continue to go all the way back to the stitch marker. Just like so and I'm gonna get the stitch marker one. So the last one there like this. And now what I want to do then is grab my pair of scissors and leave an extra long tail for yourself. And I want you to take this loop that you have on the hook and just pull it through like this. Okay, so now we have to turn the sock inside out. Okay, to finish this off and what I strongly recommend before you do it because it's a pain to be able to find it, stick your hook in the middle of the sock first and grab this string and pulling it, pull it through. You'll love yourself if you do that versus trying to find it any other way. All thumbs today. So just pulling it through like this. So now that's on the inside and now turn it inside out. So we're just gonna turn everything inside out at this point. Just make sure everything's looking good. We can now officially pull out these stitch markers. So let's pull those out. Okay. So now what we have here is that we have the very front. So I'm gonna show you how to finish this off in the back. So what I want you to do is I want you to fold the sock so the heel is flat on the back. Okay, so then this is the front of the foot. Okay, coming down and here. So all I need you to do is grab your darning needle 
and you want to do this on the inside of the, of the project because then it hides the join and uh, you won't see anything. It's more of a finishing look. It really is uh, brilliant though. Um, there you go. So all I wanted to do is, do is that I want to make sure that I'm going to fasten off. So I'm just going to come in between the stitches and I want to just sew in across the back of the heel. It's like a web stitch. Now you don't want to be over generous with the string back here because you, the child, if they're still, if they're standing at this age, um, will feel it in the back. So you just want to make sure it's kind of not bulking up uh, too much together. And then what you, once you've gone all the way across once, you're now just going to do that finishing technique of just going across one, coming back, I'm just going to come back same direction and then once mo one more time in the other direction like so and this will conclude off doing the sock and then you might want to sew in the there's a front string on the toe that you might want to sew in as well just to make it even and if you're going to go to all the effort you might as well and this here so this is the starting string that we, we had when we did the heel so we can safely cut that as well because we've been burying it and now I'm just going to simply just trim this down a little bit off cam actually you know what I'm going to leave it there and sew it in afterward and what I'm just going to do now is turn the sock inside or sorry turn the outside right <laughs> is that right so we're going to turn it in and then basically this will be the conclusion of how to do one of these cute little crochet socks just like this and uh, it just needs to be a little bit shaped and that's what you have fingers for and you can see that you have a really cute new sock on both sides. You have a perfect looking uh, heel just like this. You got the cuff, you got the front and now the, the true test is then pulling up the original one in which I just had. Are they the same size? Look at that. The pattern works out to be the exact same size so that means that the pattern is definitely working. So whether you have a boy or a girl you can be successful and thank you so much on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd for joining me today. We'll see you next time for more free inspiration and ideas. Until then, we'll see ya. Bye bye.